Hey everybody, it's Andy Davis and Neil Batra here, and we're gonna be talking to you in multiple installments uh, around the dawn of the new health CEO, which is focused on the consumer, which is really interesting because we're sitting here at the Consumer Electronics Show. And so we're gonna hit you with four topics. And the first one I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague here, Neil, is, is really around the, you know, thinking about the declining faith that consumers might have in the physician. So Neil, we, we talked about that in the paper. Why do you, so why do we think we see that decline in the physician um, and the trust there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I think this is less about what the clinician is doing right or wrong. And I think it has more to do with the empowerment that's playing out for the consumer themselves. They have more data in hand. They have the ability to, to pursue maybe alternative options or more access to secondary sort of inputs. Um, they're having broader conversations within their communities online and also in person in terms of folks being more aware of what's going on. There's more information and data than ever. So I think what this is really saying is that the, the individual who has been really beholden to the clinician for a very long time finally has options. One, well, I think it's interesting too when we think about that the, some of it is the physician and the role they play. Some of it, I think, is also the infrastructure that sits around there. Yeah. You, you have to go, you have to physically go visit a physician, whereas sometimes I can have the power to get, get a diagnostic directly on the internet, look at, look at what's happening to me. Uh, I might get perturbed a little bit if I have to go sit in a waiting room. Like, so there's elements that surround, I think, the consumer yeah. and, and that drive that. That's the physician creating an environment that isn't quite what, what caters to me. Do you think we're catering to the consumer now more often than, and, than the physician can? I, I think that's a big part of this is, is the health system. And, and, you know, our Deloitte Future of Health point of view has talked about this quite a bit, which is uh, the system itself has really been organized around the provider and their convenience. And that's been since post-World War II. So it's very hard to have a system that's aligned around a certain practitioner now flip the script in terms of saying, oh, now the, the consumer or the patient's at the center. And so I think that's a little bit of what's going on here is, is, is the consumers elevating an influence, elevating in power, elevating an awareness and data, and the infrastructure that serves them hasn't been able to sort of morph and accommodate for that. So you're, you're getting more friction. And, and you'll find in the Deloitte paper, um, lots of data around kind of signals around some of that frustration. One of the ones that caught my eye was that in more than 50% of the cases, consumers were willing to push back on a recommendation from a clinician. That is yeah. not how it's been. Historically, it's been, okay, doc, yes, doc, tell me what to do, doc. Um, we are really past those days, I think. Yeah, and you could go, you could think about when you, you or I were visiting the doctor a long time ago, you, you'd walk in, you didn't know what was wrong. You'd say, I hurt my shoulder. What do I do about it? Yeah. And now I'm walking in and I'm saying, okay, I, I got pain in my shoulder. This is the symptoms. I think I could have this. And all of a sudden you're informed, bringing informed decisions to a physician. And it, it does place a, a balance against how a, a consumer and their trust within the physician ecosystem itself. So, you know, we did, you know, as you know, I, I did a panel here at CES a couple of days ago uh, and had a fabulous group of folks on stage with me. And, and one of the stories really resonated. Um, and it was the argument that if you were a clinician going back 20 or 30 years and someone showed up in your office, um, you know, a primary care doc, you would have maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes max to essentially assess this yeah. person's health status. Yeah. And you don't have any information about what they've been doing. You don't really have a set of information around how they live or the behaviors that they engage in or not. Um, and you are being asked to go on the record and say, you know, this is your health status. You are in good shape. You need some work. Here are some areas of development. And that was really uh, the, the way this panelist framed it. It was really unfair in terms of putting that on doctors. I think what's so interesting today is the data and the existence of information, plus the longitudinal data sets that are increasingly existing out there, puts a lot of that power in the hands of the individual. They walk in with some of that context. They've been able to make some of these, these micro adjustments. And I think the clinician now has some of that information available to them. I think what we're finding is a mixed bag around the clinician's willingness to take in some of yeah. that data that's generated outside of the four walls of the facility and say, okay, I trust this data enough to actually opine and bake this into my assessment of this moment. And so I think that's a little bit of what's going on as well. And that's, and that's not a new story, but we're seeing as we walk the CES floor, as we engage in conversations, that is a continued trend, um, which is, you know, the consumer thinks they know and they want practitioners and clinicians who are serving them who support that, uh, that, that, you know, support that frame. Yeah. And so that's, that's probably a great segue. We're at, uh, we're, we're going to conclude this segment, but t t tune in because what we're going to talk about next time on the dawn of a new health CEO is the trust that consumers are putting into data. So Andy Davis, Neil Batra, we'll see you in the next chapter.